Hey guys, today on Tea Talk Texas, my dad is going to show you guys how you can take a mid-grade steak and make it taste like it comes from an upscale steakhouse. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to wash our hands. Hear my mom echoing that every time I walk into a kitchen. Just make sure that you wash your hands. Um, now, this particular piece of meat right here, you can tell that it's not really a high grade of meat. I mean, it's a supermarket cut. Um, whenever you're trying to pick a meat, you know, most of the experts will tell you if it's wrapped, run. Um, but for our purpose, that's, it's fine because we can take even a mid-grade piece of meat and turn it into an $80 steak. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple things about this. Well, first of all, it's not real firm. See how it's real soft? So we can tell that this one's already been frozen, which is fine, I guess. Um, well, it's not fine, but if it happens, then you want to be sure and rehydrate your meat. So soaking it in water is a good idea. But don't soak it in salt water. Because what salt does is it pulls the blood out of it. And that's good for chicken. You know, uh, chicken franchises, that's what they do. Well, actually, they soak in MSG, which is really salt. But you can soak in salt water to draw the blood out. And then it cooks faster. But we're not doing chicken today. Um, if you look, you know, it's got some pretty good marbling in it. Um, but the marbling that we're really looking for is not these long veins. It is the small ones that are spread throughout there. And this one doesn't have really a lot to it. Um, I mean there's some and they call that cold fat and that's really what makes a good piece of meat because even though this has got fat on the outside we're going to get good taste on the outside but on the inside you know you're going to hit that dry part you know I mean we all know there are good parts of steak when you're eating them and you save the bad parts for the last that's what you you know normally that's when I use a steak sauce or something to cover that but uh, for the most part I don't use any um, Another interesting thing about this one is you can see that this the fat here is really white and what the white tells us is that this cow was fed out on a cereal or grain the way feedlots would do. If it was a grass fed cow then this would have more of a yellowish tint to it because of the chloride that comes natural in the grass. I know that sounds like chemicals and it's bad but it's really not. I mean it's a natural thing that that comes in the grass and uh, the more yellow that you see of the fat is um, tells you that you know the cows have been grass fed but this came from a supermarket so it probably came from a feedlot but that's okay because even a mid-grade uh, steak we can turn into an $80 steak like you get at a Morton's or a, a Ruth Crisp or something like that and uh, here's kind of the trick to it so what we're going to do is we're going to make a rub for it and we're going to put in coffee. You notice this? We buy the Great Value brand. Nobody really drinks coffee around here. Uh, so we're going to put a little bit of coffee in. I do own a measuring device, but I don't think I ever use it. Lowry's is really a good one. Uh, just an all-purpose seasoning salt. And it's really closest to the Morton uh, seasoning. If you ever see Morton seasoning, it looks just like that. And tastes just like that but anyway we're gonna put some of that in there like that I mean it's definitely not an exact science uh, and if you need to google uh, some coffee rub recipes um, you can you know they're all over the internet but I mean this is just the way I cook nothing's ever the same but I'm not doing it commercially either if I was to cook commercially then you know everything would be the same because that's the key in food. Commercial food is consistency. I love this little ninja thing. I use it for almost everything. And the reason it's already ground up. Hit my camera. Okay. It's already ground up, but I like to even grind it more just to get a fine, fine powder out of it. Okay, you're going to need electricity for this. So we'll do that. I don't think anything ever even happened there. Okay. You 
if you want to know more about how to pick a, a brand of meat, there's really all kinds of um, things on the YouTube that'll teach you that. I mean, a lot of the top chefs will, will teach you how to pick, uh, pick a quality piece of meat. And there's a lot to it. I mean, that, there's a whole NCAA, you know, competition on this stuff. So, I mean, it really is detailed. But for what we're doing, I think I showed you some pretty good pointers. I always like to start off with um, some um, virgin olive oil. Probably more than that because I'm about to get messy. So, I'll rub that into it. That's probably way too much. But that's kind of my signature move. It's too much. And... Then we do it, you know, and we get, you know, a pretty good rub on there like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take, and we're going to do that. Now, a key to when you apply a rub is right before you cook it. And uh, you don't, I mean, it's not like a brisket where you're going to rub and you're going to hold because the salt content in, uh, in this mixture is going to draw it out. Remember, we talked about that. And... Um, we don't want that. Last thing we do want to do is dry out a steak. And uh, for you people who like to cook all of the color out of your steak, that's absolutely fine for you to do. We just can't be friends. Okay. Um, so you know we've got a pretty good, you know, pretty good batch on it like that. Now with Mordens in places like that, like Ruth Chris. I mean, their signature is to broil. They got special broiling ovens, and the way they do it is they'll heat up the oven and or you know heat up the broiler, get it real hot, and then they'll put that in there. Sometimes they even like will even use the spray oil and spray the grill, and that's really just to give you the marks. And they'll put it in there, and then when they see the sides of it start to draw up, they know to turn it, and then. Um, it gives them a perfect mid pink steak, which is, you know, kind of the average for what consumers want. So, the way I like to cook them is on our Santa Maria style grill. But, really, that's kind of an unfair advantage. A lot of competition guys use them because what they'll do is they'll drop the grate down in the fire and get it real super hot. And then put the steak on it. It gives them them real cool grill marks. And then they'll raise it up and cook it a little bit slower. And then, um, then when they get ready to flip it, they'll come back down and do the whole process again. Or they may grill. I mean, keep it all over flames and you know cook one side to get good grill marks and then flip it over, cook another side to get grill marks and then bring it up. I mean, that's searing. So either way works real well. We're not going to use a Santa Maria today because that's really, that's just too big an advantage for me. So we're going to kind of do it a little bit old school. So let's go build a fire. We had this old fireplace out back that we like to use and we just built that little grate to throw on there and it's it's funny because we use we build the most awesome cooking apparatus on the market but you know we don't want to mess up any of our new inventory in the demo that we keep around here um, right now it's out because we loan it to charity events and things like that and right now there's it's out on an event so this is what we're doing Now, while I'm letting that fire burn down, I want to go over a couple things with you. I mean, all of you got these in your kitchen, right? Okay. These things are good for one reason. That is to keep people away from getting your steak. Other than that, it really isn't any good. You do not want to poke your steak with this thing because if you do, all the juices are going to come out. This is what you want to use. Okay. You see, it's, it doesn't poke a hole in it. We want to keep the juices inside that. A steak shouldn't be cut until it's ready to serve. Okay? Well, let's go out and see how the fire's done. So whatever surface you're cooking on, you just want to make sure that you get that grill real hot before you put anything on it. Give you those nice grill marks and cooks fast. Steak needs to cook fast. So, you know, now while the steaks are out there cooking, uh, I'm going to prepare this just kind of a favorite around here except that most of the time we put onions in it but we can't today because 
you always got that one person, right? So, basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna quarter. I mean, we're just gonna, you know, cut some potatoes up. Pretty easy. Um, this is my knife sharpener of choice. You can get it at the, um, you know, at really Walmart or anything like that, and it's always gonna be in the, um, uh, sporting section because basically it comes with a, a fillet knife but I like it because it doesn't require a lot you know it sharpens it right every time so it's kind of a favorite of mine and been a favorite of mine for years that knife right there was given to me by my mom like 40 years ago so I use it quite a bit but just the old butcher knife is my favorite we have some really expensive knives but I just like this one. I don't know why. I guess I'm just uh, you know, stuck in my ways. But, so what we're going to do here, we call these German potatoes, and I don't know why we could do that. I think it's because the person who first introduced me to it called them that. But um, we've been making them around our house for years. And... Uh, but basically, what we're going to do is, after we just get finished cutting them, we're going to, um, let me show you this, you know, this cut one, that, you know. And it's funny because it's, People of all ages just like this. I don't know, you know, that ain't the most healthy thing in the world, so. But, let's face it, most things that are good aren't. You know. Okay. So, what we do. I always use a cast iron. I don't even know why they make any other pans besides cast iron. I just love it. You see, we just pile some butter in there. And then we're going to um, just pile these on top. Sure is better with onions, but you now. And then we pile the butter on top, and then we use cavenders. And that's a Greek seasoning for our German potatoes. I don't know why, but I don't still know why we call them that. That's what we've called them around here for years. And just pile on some of that. After we've browned our potatoes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to drain all this butter off. And this is the reason why I chose this dish to serve with it. Because, see how they're nice and brown and toasty. That's what we want right there. Okay. Set this back over here to where we serve them. And now, if you're Morton Steakhouse, what you do is you put au jus onto um, it. You know, you'll add the au jus onto your steak. Um, I like this technique better. You take butter and add some local honey. You have to add local. You have to use local honey because local bees will actually protect you against allergies. So. Whenever you buy honey, you have to buy local honey. Okay. Now we got the potatoes on there, and then we put the steak on there. And the reason that I like to use this is because, um, well, if you're going to make an au steak sauce, you want to, um, you know, have a pan. You could use a broiler and have a pan that catches and renders the fat down, and then you can mix it with like a little bit of Worcestershire sauce or however you like to make it. It's not a true au jus, but it's what they're calling it. And that's all it really is. It's meat drippings plus um, a little bit of um, Worcestershire sauce. And But this right here works really good for me because I'm a big butter on steak fan. Mix it with a little bit of um, honey and you're about ready to go. The last thing you need to do is you need to call your cardiologist, put them on standby. And then go enjoy your lunch.
So I know you guys couldn't taste the steak, but if you could have, man, it was delicious. So you guys give it a try at home and you will not be disappointed. You'll never eat a steak any other way. Comment below, subscribe, tell us what you think about it.